Hey everybody, it's Phil from One Wall Studio here, once again, bringing you another re- absurdly thorough review of another Audio Assault plugin, because quite frankly, they are fantastic and they keep getting more fantastic. So this time, the format is, I'm going to play this song, show off some of the unique functions and abilities you can find in this The Crown EX Audio Assault plugin. Now, it's just another one of those plugins that's on the EX platform, which is the brand new platform that Audio Assault's been doing all of their plugs in recently. And you can see here that it's got the same kind of UI as it usually does. It's got the pedals over here with a noise gate, a volume booster, and a Tube Screamer pedal. You've got the amp itself with a high, low, and clean channel that changes with each individual switch here. You get to make your own settings for it. So if you wanted to switch between these, you absolutely could, especially with automation, which is a cool thought. You've got a power switch here. Turn it on and off. You've got a tight switch, which basically does a setting that's kind of a mid boosty uh, into the gain type of vibe. So it's kind of like a tube screamer in the default position almost. You've got your gain here. You've got your bass with a pre and post switch for the entire EQ. You've got this mid knob and you've got this treble knob. Then after these tone shaping options, you've got the presence and depth knob, which are always going to be post tone stack. And then you've got the focus knob, which adjusts a different type of mid range, or at least that's what it feels like. And then you've got a master output here. Now, what sets this one apart from most other Audio Assault plugins is that you've actually got the option to choose between the 6L6s here and the EL34, which means you're changing the tubes that are in use, which is definitely a breath of fresh air. It's something unique that uh, you don't see very often in these Audio Assault plugins, with the exception of AHM, where there was actually a slider knob that allowed you to switch between the two different versions of the amp and slide in between them at varying degrees. Next up, you've got the 3D cabs, once again, with the high pass and the low pass, the two movable mics that, as you can move around, you can also hold shift to change the mic distance on, and the same with the second one, hold shift, pull it in, pull it out, you can adjust the level overall, you can adjust the balance of the mics between the first mic and the second mic, or you can switch to the IRs, which will allow you to choose any IR you need, go back to your homepage, add folders, add IRs, do whatever, And then you can choose to low pass or high pass these, use the slider as usual to adjust the virtual microphone, getting closer or farther from the IR. You can adjust the blend and you can align the phase with samples between the two different IRs. Very cool, very epic, and it's no different than the other ones. If you're interested in the other ones, you can go back and watch any of my old videos on especially Shibalba, where a lot of these ideas were introduced as concepts. So you've also got the FX rack, where you've got the graphic EQ here, which is a multiband EQ that you can use to adjust any of these individual frequencies in post after the cabinet. Got a chorus, which allows you to adjust the depth, speed, width, and the mix of the chorus. You've got a delay with a tempo sync button, the ability to adjust or MIDI learn the tempo sync just by clicking on it. And you can adjust the time base as well. You can adjust the feedback, you can adjust the width, which would be the stereo width, and you can blend it in with this little mix knob. And the reverb here is a good reverb that I like for all of my guitar tones. Uh, It's really simple. You got a size option, a decay option, a tone option for the brightness or darkness of the verb, a pre-delay for whenever the verb starts after the initial hit, and the mix knob as per usual. You got an in and an out volume knob, which actually does some amazing things with this particular sim, as I'll show you shortly. You've got the settings menu, which also has access to another settings menu, allowing you to change the input routing from left, right, stereo, as per usual. Change the quality, which low quality is still going to be perfectly fine. Mid, high, and max just increase the oversampling rates. You can switch between the graphics native stack or OpenGL stack, which if you're on a Linux-based system is especially going to make a difference, and allowing you to simulate a double track here with the off or simulate buttons, which are very clear. You've also got the guitar tuner, which pops right up, and you can actually switch between 432 hertz if you're a particular fan of Woo, or you can switch to 440 if you're a fan of music that doesn't sound flat. You can also jump into the presets menu, which, as per usual, has lots of options for being able to uh, change what options are affected by it loading each preset. And you can notice here I have my ahem, secret sauce presets that are going to be 
linked in the description below because I want to share all of my presets that I use in this video. And if I make any more, I'll add those to the pack too. Here we have the preset menu. You can save a preset or load a preset. You can click, double click on a preset and it should load it pretty easily. You could also save a preset and it'll ask you if you want to put it in a category where you can actually save it under a folder in the default IR path, or you can actually rename it to something like this and it'll make a new folder. So if I were to hit save, it would actually save this preset to this folder inside the main, just like it did when I made the One Wall Studio Tones folder. So I hope that's a good enough rundown of the UI so far. There's also some MIDI presets and a MIDI editor. However, since I don't use this with MIDI, I really can't do that much with it. You also have a devices option if you're using this in standalone, which I am not. I'm very clearly using Reaper right now. And last but not least, you can open the data folder, which will allow you to manually change any of these things. You've got these lovely little dot poo files for the MIDI settings and the settings. You've got this presets folder, which is literally the exact same one that the crown EX actually draws from, including the folders that were created within it. You've got the IRs here, which are a sane human IR format, which shows the default IRs in wave format. So you can use them with any plugin, not just this one. And if you go back to the audio assault folder, you'll see all of the audio assault plugins that I've ever purchased. All right. So enough of that. Let's look at this. This is version 1.0. I don't think clicking on the version number actually does anything, but this is the release to market version. All right, so let's listen in on some things, shall we? So for this, I've boosted the volume of the guitars and the bass and the drums are relatively low in the mix. So first up, we have this intro slash lead ambient track. Let me walk you through this as you hear it. It's a very plucky, clean lead some high boost without the amp just the clean DI with the imp the sustain on this is really good now you'll notice I'm using this cabinet in particular with these settings over here for these cleans and then I'm doing some boosting on the graphic EQ and cutting just to cut some of that fluff while still having that warmth which helps it sit a little cleaner in the mix I am using the chorusing this is what it would be at 100% but as it is it's just adding a little bit of depth I've got a delay on it, eighth note and I've got a reverb on it as well. This is a pretty plucky lead, almost acoustic. If you used it on an electric acoustic, it might be a little much, but to give it that vibe of an electric acoustic on a regular electric, I think it works wonders. Now, if you listen to the rest of it coming in, we've got the rhythm cleans here. Oh. Listen to that breakup, that little edge. Now you notice on the lead I had the EL34s, on the rhythms I have the 6L6s. Listen to what happens as I switch between them. It's very subtle. The 6L6s just have a little bit more of a rounded bottom and a slight recess in the mids. Now, if you adjust the input volume into the amp, you can get a lot cleaner or a lot more saturated, a lot quicker. Personally, I like it this way. And in the mix, those guitars sound so warm and the dynamics are ridiculous. Oh. 
Oh. Now, this is a beautiful example, in my opinion, of a pushed clean lead. So you notice that I'm still in the clean channels on this amp, but the pedals are driving it a little bit more, a little bit more this Tube Screamer. Little roll off on the highs. And a little bit more focus. Also, everything's slightly off center on the cab. Cause you can get some real warm tones. And that's why I call it a pushed clean lead, because it is clean, but it's just pushed harder into the amp with a tube screamer. And in context, all of it just blends in so nicely. So now we get into the heavier boys. With that emo vibe. Now keep in mind, this is still in the clean channel. So now we're just pushing the pedals a little bit harder, driving that amp a little bit more, and pushing these uh, EL34s a little bit nicer. Also engage the tight switch, because without it... It, do it doesn't have the harmonics I needed to have. Feel how that tight just f makes it feel so much stronger. I love it. A little bit more on axis. And less effects overall. I love it. And here's where we get into the heavy boys. Now for this one, I actually saved two. The brighter version and the less bright. The differences are entirely in the pedals. So I know they're a little bit more abrasive on the ears, but they would probably be recessed a little bit in an actual mix. Here we go with the heavy boys. And then on top of that, just for fun, I have a classic death metal lead. Like, I'm talking old school here. Ambient at first. So you notice how you can get some really filthy tones out of that, like super disgusting. But you can also adjust these kinds of tones. So you can really get anything you desire out of this, because this sounds so boutique-y. And the other thing is, because you can do so much with the input and output gain, to act like a roll-off, clean up your tone, saturate it,
there's a lot of gain on tap here. And honestly, it gives you a lot of opportunities to experiment with your tone. So I know this hasn't been super long because I kind of flew through it, but I do think that every parameter in here is so intuitive and easy to use that if you were just doing something like this while tone seeking, You could get some stupid warm tones so quickly and it could honestly sound amazing. So my suggestion is, even though this isn't nearly as uh, in-depth as before, because at this point the EX platform is a lot more readily available, I do think that we've basically touched everything we need to touch because it's so intuitive and so simple. If you wanted to adjust a cab because you weren't feeling the uh, push clean lead maybe, uh, quite the way that you'd hoped you would. You could get some serious... You could get some serious mileage out of this thing. Like, I think the best selling point that I can think of for this plugin is that it's just so easy to get good tones immediately. You roll up the volume on your guitar, you adjust the input gain, you fly through it, and then boom, it sounds great. And that's honestly all I can think of. Like, the death metal tones, the opportunity for, like, emo or rock or Midwestern or whatever you want. Like, even country tones would sound awesome. I know it's emulating a Mesa, so there's so many opportunities here for sick tone building. But just having that little tube switch button right here that's so accessible and so easy to use, as opposed to, so like, in uh, Amplitude, where it's on the back of a head and you have to actually switch back and forth between the front and the back in order to do any tube adjustment. This makes it so easy. And instead of having multiple channels that are like right next to each other, you can just switch between them like this. And it's so easy to craft your tone and adjust it throughout a song. So you might only need one channel. Like there's a lot of possibilities here. And honestly, it's kind of unparalleled. Resizing the GUI is super simple now. You don't have to adjust any switches. You can just pull up, pull down, and everything comes up with it. The plugins are basically perfect at this point, in my opinion. So if you really are looking for an amazing tone crafting machine based on a Mesa crown of some kind, you're definitely going to want to check this out. And at the prices that Audio Assault plugins go for, it would be ridiculous for you not to add this to your collection. I own all of the Mesa boogie packs from Amplitube, and I still wanted this because it sounds so good. And in shootouts that I've heard, it definitely holds its own. So do me a favor, go to the Audio Assault website and just grab this. If it's on sale for like $10, $5, whatever, even at full price, it's worth it. So go for it. This has been an absurdly thorough review. And if you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Thank you very much. Oh, and my wife is always telling me that if I don't plug my channel, I won't be allowed to drink any more of my monsters, which, well, that could also be like my doctor saying that. But either way, I want more monster. I only have 35 cans left. So if you guys don't mind, please like, comment and subscribe. And I hope to see you guys again next time. This is Phil from One Mole Studio signing out.